Well, to start with, no cane that you see on this grapevine will grow a grape. You get that? Nothing that you see here that is a cane will grow a grape. Where the grapes will grow is from that new shoot and that new shoot and all of those shoots. What you're trying to do, and I don't have it that well designed, my trunk is not as straight as I would like it to be. You can see where the wires over time pulled down and they, uh, I couldn't keep them tight enough. And so the trunk got curly. No big problem. I don't have two uh, branches coming off from the trunk on the bottom wire. I have plenty on the upper wire. Isn't it nice to hear all these birds singing? They know it's spring. When you prune anything, trees, bushes, grapevines, berries. There's a thing called the three D's. And that stands for dead, diseased, or damaged. I'm going to have to cut this off because the dog next door has realized I'm outside. I have to get my water hose. That shuts him up. And I'm slowly getting them trained that when I have this hose in my hand, they're going to get wet. And I'm going to show you my little technique. Works every time. I did it to them yesterday. By the time I got here with the hose in my hand, they were already running away. I would much rather hear the birds than I would those yapping dogs. So dead, damaged, diseased. So if that's something dead, you have to cut it off. If you saw any kind of disease out here, you would cut it off. If one of these is broken, you would cut it off. That goes with anything, rose bushes, same deal. See, this is not swelling out, there's no buds. More than likely, that's dead. That might be a bud there. Uh, you wouldn't need to save this. I would just cut it off close there. But you could cut it off there and that bud would work, but we're not gonna need that bud. What we're aiming for is to get this trunk, and if it was a perfect whirl, I would have two laterals coming off at that bottom wire and two at the top, and I'm going to bring this back toward the center, and I'm going to leave a cane that grew grapes last year left and right of the center on this top wire, and each one will have ten buds. And each bud will come out and open and make two bunches of grapes. So I'll have 20 bunches on this side of the upper wire and 20 bunches on this side of the upper wire. And if I had two of these down at the bottom, and you can see I've been trying to get one down there by bringing it down, I would have 20 on the bottom on the left and 20 on the right. That would give me 80 bunches of grapes for the birds to eat in our yard. You'll notice the bark on the oldest part, the trunk. Looks like a tree. It is old bark. As you come up and see this one grew from that, it is not as dark and old as that one. And it's shedding its bark as it expands. And then you come up to the next year's growth and see this is a lot slicker. See, this is the old bark. This is the bark that grew last year. This is where you'll get grapes this year. And when these come out, I'll get up here to one that's a little longer, that will make a whole new cane. And that's where the grapes will grow. And then next year, we will be using that cane 
to cut it back to 10. So the problem is if you don't keep it toward the center of the plant, you have grapes all the way over here because that's how far they grew this year. Last year, this one grew from right there all the way to here. So if I don't prune this back, next year, this one will grow all the way over there to that bush. And the next year, it'll be all the way over there to that white azalea. And in a couple more years, it'll be over there to the shed. Well, you don't really want that, do you? So you've got to keep cutting them back to keep them, hopefully, between these two poles. Now these two poles are pretty right there, about 10 feet. You need them about 10 or 12 feet. That's probably about eight, a little close. This is a hard thing to discuss and I'm sort of winging this. I don't have a uh, script. So hopefully it won't be too herky-jerky. Using the same one we just talked about as an example, I don't need all of this. It's interfering with this grapevine. So if I cut this one all the way back to here, that cane will come out and give me two bunches of grapes. It can't support 40 or 50 bunches on this thing that's 10 feet long. So that could be my 10 my 20 bunches, 20, uh, two bunches of grapes. But it's a long way from the trunk. Because see, this is all the way back to here, all the way back to there, and all the way back to there. That's because I was trying to get this one to grow on this bottom line. A bit of wire. So I can take this whole thing off to right there and get two bunches of grapes on that wire. With the three D's, there's also things if they're rubbing each other. Now see this one is grown and bent over. The wind broke it down when that branch over there had, uh, got larger and heavier and wet probably after rain and it it will rub on that one. So if we were really trying to save that, which is all going to be cut off, there's not going to be much left here when we're finished with this pruning job. Uh, that would wear into that one and could disease both of these canes and you don't need that. By using the 3D method, you've got all this mass and you don't really know what to cut. But if you cut everything out that's not showing any growth, and it's easy to do this part of the year, but a few weeks ago before it turned warm, these things wouldn't have swollen out. But you could see from the cane that it, and the buds would be swelling, that that would be a viable cane. You can tell this one's dead. You can tell this is dead. You can tell that's dead. You can tell everything past here is dead. That little bud might swell out, but it's so inferior that I think it's gone. Yeah, see, it's not even green underneath. So that's going to be cut off. So to start with, you go in here, there's a bud there that will make it, so you cut it off right there. You cut all this diseased, dead, dying, damaged off, and then you have less here to work with. And then all the rest of it, you have to pay a little more attention to what you're cutting. So that's all for today, and I'm going to have to start trimming on this, and you'll see what it looks like after I cut all the 3D's off and anything's rubbing each other.